Hello everyone, very good day to all of you. It is my pleasure to introduce you to yet another aspiring neurologist, uh, neurology trainee, uh, Dr. Lakshini Gunasekar. A very good morning to you. How are you today? Good morning. Very well, thanks. How are you? So tell us uh, who you are and uh, what sort of a uh, uh, place uh, you are in in your training program. Start from your beginning and take us uh, through the journey of uh, coming to where you are today and where you want to be in few years time down the track? Sure. So I'm one of the first year neurology registrars working in Melbourne in Victoria, Australia. And my path to getting here has been quite standard, I would say. I had quite an interest in science and humanities in high school, and I was always looking for a career that um, had an intersection where I'd be able to talk to people and help people in their life and also apply science. And I always enjoyed biology and human diseases, human physiology, and also human anatomy. And so going through high school, most of my subjects were geared towards studying medicine. And I did a Bachelor of Biomedicine majoring in immunology when I went through undergraduate studies. And following on from this, I did postgraduate medicine with a specific interest in immunology and then went on to do my uh, internship at the Royal Melbourne Hospital where I worked for about four years and then um, subsequently went into neurology advanced training and I'm a first year trainee. Where I would be looking to go would um, potentially be headache medicine or neuroimmunology um, given my background. That's uh, very fittingly Dr. Gunasekara as uh, this year World Brain Day theme is uh, uh, with the ambitious uh, aim to stop uh, multiple sclerosis. Uh, mm -hmm. Early this morning, uh, I had an interview uh, with a gentleman called uh, uh, Professor Emeritus uh, Austin Sumner. You probably have not heard of him. Mm -hmm. uh, the Professor Sumner was uh, born in uh, New Zealand uh, and uh, trained uh, in New Zealand and then went to UK. Uh, he's uh, very well retired now. Uh, but uh, he is uh, one of the first uh, gentlemen uh, during his much younger days uh, who became interested uh, in uh, diphtheria toxin uh, being uh, able to demyelinate uh, neurons. Uh, and him and uh, late uh, Professor Ian MacDonald, who was also from New Zealand uh, in Dunedin, uh, before they were entering into physician training, I'm not 100% certain on this particular aspect, or after the training, any, anyway, during their much younger age, uh, they were basically doing the modeling of uh, how the neuronal disease uh, is related to inflammation and demyelination. Mm. This, this indeed led to the uh, true uh, understanding or the initial understanding of how multiple sclerosis uh, occur. Late uh, Ian MacDonald is no longer with us anymore, but you are very well aware of MacDonald's criteria. He went on to head up the Queen Square Neurology Department and he is a very huge name in, in, in neurology. So you could see how uh, basic understanding of disease mechanisms uh, at one generation basically lead to a different generation for a folk like me in 2021 to rally rest of the others around uh, to run an ambitious global theme to stop multiple sclerosis that uh, uh, late uh, the Professor Ian MacDonald or Emeritus Professor Austin Sumner would never thought uh, 40, 50 years ago would be possible. Mm. And I was fortunate enough to hunt him down and then uh, they get an interview which would be available through WFN YouTube channel for benefit of you all in time to come so that you can understand uh, how these two things are intimately related. Uh, so the, 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 whatever the field that you choose uh, in neurology, there would be a big role that inflammation would play. Mm. Uh, so as a, as a young trainee, uh, how excited are you to see two very powerful global bodies, uh, World Federation Neurology, which is the largest uh, non-profit uh, organization affiliated with World Health Organization, comprised uh, of well over 120 countries. Uh, your NSAN, uh, AAN, they are all components uh, of this massive uh, organization. 
Mm. And we partnered with uh, another equally powerful, uh, the WHO affiliated uh, uh, patient advocacy organization called uh, Multiple Sclerosis uh, International Federation, or MSIF, uh, which basically support many trainees uh, from resource limited setting to go to resource full setting and then go back to their own original roots and build things and offer much needed uh, world-class services to their patients. So as a young trainee, having heard all these things within last two minutes or three minutes from me, how excited are you to see such a uh, year-long global campaign to raise profile of this disease, uh, raise profi- profile of brain health uh, with a massive global campaign, despite uh, the calamity that we all live in at this point of time? I think it's very, very exciting. I mean, MS, as we know, is one of the most common diseases that we'll experience as neurologists. And unfortunately, these patients have disease that spans an entire lifetime from the minute that they're diagnosed in the most formative parts of their life as 20 or 30 year olds. And, you know, unfortunately, we do see them get affected by this for the rest of their lives. So it's a very important condition that um, takes down, especially young women, during the most important parts of their life when they're, you know, family planning and also career planning. So there's quite a lot of disability. And as you would know, by the time we finish this interview in about five minutes or 10 minutes, one or two more people will be diagnosed with MS around the world. So it's a very important condition to raise awareness about, um, especially because it affects young people in the prime of their lives. And the exciting thing about doing neurology now is that there's never been a better time to study neurology and to do neurology training because of all the options that we have available for MS. So unfortunately, there is no cure, but at the same time, we've never had so many treatments. We've got oral options, we've got injectables, we've got infusions. It's a very exciting time to be doing it. Um, And I think that uh, World Brain Day Focusing on MS is a great start, um, but we also have to remember that this isn't the end and that this is really just one day that will hopefully raise a lot of awareness and will lead to a lot more research efforts in the future. It, it's actually, the Dr. Gunasekara, what we run is uh, the day we have chosen because that, was the birth, that is the birthday of World Federation Neurology, uh, 22nd of July, but we run a year-long campaign. So the campaign is on as of now. Mm. What we normally do is uh, we select a particular disease for that particular year Mm. and then we partner with uh, uh, another massive global organization and then we create uh, contents uh, that can be used by people globally. So the Mm. contents include a slide deck, a whole variety of uh, social media posts. Uh, The committee spend a lot of time uh, uh, the the working hard to put the best uh, possible toolbox uh, that is worthy of use uh, globally. And then we invite uh, global communities to use them and translate them into their own languages and use the press brief that we create to talk to their political leaders, policymakers. Uh, and the slide deck is a basic slide deck that uh, any doctor, any trainee, any medical student can use uh, to raise awareness within their craft groups. So while we have peak of the activities on 22nd of July, Mm -hmm. the material is available from now onwards. uh, And uh, there will be uh, several live uh, webinars worldwide uh, where five global experts uh, would uh, provide uh, their sort of synthesis of various aspects of the chosen disease uh, and then live Q&A session also. What we want uh, from youngsters like you is uh, to visit uh, World Federation Neurology World Brain Day page, and then you can yourself direct to the toolbox that we created, and they're basically yours. So you can use them in your Facebook groups, uh, Twitter groups, uh, LinkedIn groups, uh, Instagram, any social media that you have. You can even do TikTok uh, if you wish with the contents that we created. Nobody would sue you, and we are very particular to keep them uh, non-copyright way for people to use to raise uh, awareness of brain health as uh, brain matters uh, most uh, uh, in uh, any behavior of us as a species. WFN is also interested in uh, more and more younger people joining us and collaborating with us. Uh, 
most of the time, specifically with the face-to-face meetings, uh, many youngsters would ask from me, how do you get involved uh, with WFN activities? Uh, some even ask, uh, how do you become a leader in WFN? So there's no sort of a prescription as such. Uh, the prescription is uh, getting your hands dirty, getting involved with the activities on offer, and then keep talking. This year, there's a very high chance that uh, we might be able to have a special dedicated uh, volume of our Journal of the Clinical Neurosciences, uh, which has impact factor very close to four now, very popular journal, hard to publish. Uh, We would dedicate uh, specific segments uh, coming to the journal as the editor-in-chief told me a few days back uh, to support uh, these sort of activities with uh, uh, the PubMed index uh, and uh, citation index uh, and value for people to do. So there are more things on offer. And I would strongly encourage uh, you all to use this material and make them your own and uh, the support us uh, as uh, personally, we would like to see at least 2.8 million posts uh, worldwide this year campaign, uh, as uh, we have 2.8 million people with multiple sclerosis at this point of uh, time. Normally, the campaign approached by close to 100 million people. We really want to surpass that number this year, given that people are used to virtual life more so than before. Lastly, uh, what do you want from these global organizations other than what we discussed so far for you to continue to aspire to be the best neurologist, best academic neurologist, best clinician scientist that you can be and also to offer your services, not only to your hospital and city, but to the world? I think um, everything that we've talked about is very important. Uh, So raising awareness, continuing to research this disease, continuing to find treatments, continuing to search for the underlying pathophysiology so that one day we can target this with treatments before people develop symptoms. All of that is very inspiring and it's something that we need to consider. Um, And I think it's very important for neurology trainees around the world to unite. And uh, it might be through social media, especially given the COVID campaign, but it's very important that people are aware of this disease and we come together and um, advocate for our patients. And the other thing is uh, you are uh, very fortunate uh, in Australia with uh, ample amount of educational opportunities and exceptionally good mentors uh, wherever you go. And I would strongly encourage you and your colleagues to share what you can uh, from the educational point of view, uh, given that we are all virtual, uh, specifically with the countries uh, with uh, difficult access to uh, this material. I think individually, every human being is unique. Every neurology trainee is uh, unique and we just need to collaborate uh, more and collegiate more and see whether we can solve problems uh, with a bit better than what it is uh, now. Mm, Uh, My last question is, uh, what is your message to all those uh, young medical students out there not knowing what to do with their life uh, as they study or high school students uh, who are splitting their hair, what (laughs) to do, which subjects to choose, uh, despite they might end up with a very high ATAR in Australia and highest scores in other countries, uh, and also for those uh, interested uh, basic physician trainees who wanted to get into neurology, but uh, neurology training entrance uh, has become somewhat competitive uh, locally as well as globally. So what's your message encompassing all those groups? Come and do medicine, come and do neurology. Um, Look, I think you need to pick subjects that interest you genuinely. And I think if you pick things that you really enjoy, then it won't really feel like study because you really want to understand the content and you'll learn it a lot better. The great thing about doing neurology is that it really comes down to the basics of what it is to be a good doctor. You have to go you have, you're reliant on a very good history and also a very good examination. And even though we've got a lot of very advanced imaging techniques right now, especially in things like stroke medicine, which have come a really long way, it really ultimately goes back to what you do at the bedside. You, if you take a very good history and you do a very thorough examination, then you can almost always find out what's wrong with the patient. And arguably, I would say that neurology is one of those specialties where 
the history and examination is more important than in any other specialty. And it's very satisfying when you can find out and localize a lesion at the bedside and then have it confirmed later on imaging. So we're reliant a lot on very good clinical skills and it's a very satisfying thing. If you understand the anatomy, you understand the physiology, you really can work out almost anything. You can always bring it back to first principles and that's a very satisfying thing. And I would probably add uh, three more things. Uh, the utmost uh, care, kindness and compassion uh, and bring uh, the, the boundless uh, amount of humanity to mm -hmm. the bedside. That, that's what uh, makes uh, a good doctor, although there's no sort of particular prescription as uh, who is uh, a, a good doctor. Mm -hmm. Dr. Gunasekar, thank you very much. And we wish you all the very best with your future endeavors. And we wish you good luck uh, with your future uh, you, plans with your career. Thank you. Take care.